What's up, Instagram? It's about to go down. It's your boy, Carlos Cicada, in the house. Right now, I'm going to be interviewed by my brother, Lawrence. Follow him on IG, The Wolf of Queen Street. He's going to give Jordan B a rub for his money, baby. <laughs> All right, brother Lawrence, now that I am live over here on Instagram, baby, let's get rock and roll with our interview, and we're going to have a great time, my friend. And he's in Australia. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, showing up to blow up, and we're going to have a great time here. Welcome to the show, Carlos Cicada. Welcome to the Wolf of Queen Street podcast audio or video series if you're watching today. I am exceptionally excited to have this mad Latin large teddy bear on the show known as Carlos Cicada, the man that Tony Robbins himself called the Tony Robbins of Latin America. And if anyone's watching the video, you could see because he's loving his Mexican hat at the moment, loud and proud. And a guy comes out and he's just bigger than life and tells the real story of rags to riches. A lot of people come on the show and they talk about rags to riches. What does it mean? This man, seven years old, to survive was selling bread on the streets of Brazil to make money and to help out his mother. Today, he has sold over $3 billion to Fortune 100 companies, and he's showing the way how to build a legacy, not build a company, because a legacy is what stands, at the, stands time and will make you successful every day. Businesses fall over every other day, but legacies always stand still. Carlos, welcome to my show. My brother, it's a pleasure being here, my friend. I'm just blessed to be here. One yeah. more day. You know what I mean, as I always like to say, man, we are here to serve others, not to pitch people. And yeah. that's the problem with a lot of people out there. Everybody thinks about what is in it for me versus what is in it for we. Yeah. Here's the stuff that's going to really, you know, set it up, is up. And you guys are going to be in for a treat because we're going to be dropping massive knowledge here, wisdom, and strategies that you guys can go apply this week next week and go implement in your business and get mm -hmm. a real change none of the fluff that's online on social media it will be no call to actions here nothing to sell we're gonna have a great freaking time because my goal is to raise the standard around the world in the coaching consulting and in speaking industry because one day a long time ago i made a promise to some kids they mm -hmm. are no longer here they die due to violence so yep. this for me is personal Mm -hmm. This is a serious business. And by the way, businesses go out of business. Movement doesn't go out of business. That's I'm great. You, talk, you open up talking about that because that's something that I preach quite a bit. You know, if mm -hmm. you want to go build something, go build a movement. Yeah. And I love it. You know, when you talk about my, my uh, Mexican hat the other day, <laughs> I, you know, I live in Silicon Valley and <laughs> I have a lot of uh, big corporations and a lot of billionaires that I talk to and that I do consults for them. They call me, they joke around, they call me the billionaire secret weapon yep. because I call them on their shit. No, everybody, you see, here's the deal, right? People, they meet a billionaire, a celebrity, a guru, a social media titan, and then they, they, they get all like, oh, let me get a selfie with you or help me out with this yep. or can I get some cash? Or they like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How about, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. How's it going? Hey, what do you need help with? Oh, you are a human being just like me. You know what I mean? They, like, no, everybody comes with them for something. When I meet these people, you know what I mean? I'm blowing the yellow card like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm giving them my yellow card and I'm talking to them and I'm making them laugh and I'm telling them, like, I saw your blog or I saw your post or I, I look at your, you know, quarter, uh, quarterly report for your company or for this project that you are working on. And here's, if you, if you do, you, do you, would you mind me giving you some advice on this? Yeah. You know, ask permission. You have no idea how much they respect that. Just because you are coming in, wanted to add value and, and, and give an advice on something that, you know, you know, they're like, what are they going to say? No. They say, no, keep moving. Yeah. They say, no, you say next. But you know what I mean? It's about how can you add value to these people? How can you, like, separate yourself from the pack? And then whenever I, they call me in to come in and do a consulting on a project, I walk in there in a nice suit, mm -hmm. have my wedding ring, and then, then I have my sombrero on. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, and they're like, you see, Carlos, they tell me all the time. That's why we love hanging around with you and having you on our board and, and, you know, consulting and advising us on projects because you just walk the talk. You really don't care if somebody says, okay, let's fire Carlos right now because yeah. he's walking you on the head. Because why? Like, guys, here's the deal. Whatever is your personalities, whatever you love to do, don't be afraid to show it or to hold back 
Because guess what? That will bring you nothing but setbacks. Yep. And I'm not afraid to show who I am. I'm not afraid to be raw and real. Or if I say something stupid over here that people don't like, who cares? I mean, you know, it's not, we're not going to edit it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like just life goes on. Whatever you feel like, if you're getting paid, doing what you love, your passion, keep doing. Yep. And guess what? It may take you a while. It may, it, it, the struggle is real. Three things are for certain. You will grow, you will improve, and you will face adversities. Mm-hmm. Those are three I, things for hundred percent. You know what I mean? But but I talk too much, Lawrence. <laughs> you know, no. I got a cup of coffee over here by my beautiful wife, and uh, she doesn't like social media on the camera, so she's <laughs> <laughs> she's out like a comment. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I love I love what you had to say there, and the big thing about it's like breaking the mold, breaking the standard sale or standard sort of relationship. So when someone comes in, you know, you go to any big event, and let's look, let's talk the likes of Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, Dean Grossio, any of those guys. And what people want is they want, hey, stand next to me, I have a photo that I can put on the, on the Instagram or I can put on YouTube or Facebook. But there's no real relationship building with it, you know. So I, f- funny example with myself, I've got to spend five minutes with Grant Cardone uh, over the last 12 months when he was an event here over in New Zealand. And I didn't stand and go, hey, can I get a photo or anything else? I actually spent five minutes with him and we spoke and we spoke about his business and spoke about him trying to launch out of South Africa. And I said to him, I'll reach out to some people in South Africa. And straight away, because we had an honest discussion, he gave me the time of day. And we stood there and we had a big chat where if I went to him and said, hey, Grant, can I get a photo and do that? He would have gone like, okay, cool. And then he would have gone and stepped, stepped further away and gone, I don't want to stand next to that dude. He's offering nothing in my space. And I try to t- say that to a lot of people at the moment in the sense of when you go and meet networks or you go and your, your network is your wealth, once you meet people, make sure they are actual people that you see and feel and help out because otherwise literally the, every time they walk in the room they're going to be like oh this this dude here just wants something he's not going to offer his time he's not going to offer to help me and so forth and it's the biggest thing that i push to anyone in my network like yourself carlos i say to anyone that i meet in this world as soon as you come into my network my network's your network and we all see how we can help each other it's so it's so it's so true because you know, you know i always tell people Lawrence, is that you most people go around the world they leave paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. You should, you, uh, whatever you're doing now, I challenge you guys to make a huge shift and, and, and let the phone go and start leaving relationship to relationship. Mm-hmm. Pick up the phone, talk to people, you know, put yourself in the environment where successful people are and strike a conversation just like Lawrence did. Because I'll tell you guys something right now, over the years, you know, being in this industry for so long and doing disruptive things, we're going to share a couple of stories. Successful people, they have time. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So when you see them in an event, walking on a hallway, on social media, reach out to them. Even if they don't respond for six months, if you keep reaching out and mm-hmm. then be creative when you reach out, don't just send a text message. Send an actual video. Yeah. You know what I mean? holding their book or, or, or holding something that they're talking about or talking about how grateful you are because they, they did this blog or they did this video or they talk about this subject that helped impact and change your life. Yep. Do that. Do, just be creative. Separate yourself from the pack. I see whatever you guys do from now on, I want you guys to counter the norm. Mm-hmm. I want you guys to counter the culture. Here's the deal, guys. You know, I want you guys to imagine. Remember when you guys were like little kids, right? Riding bicycles. You know, everything was cool, right? You guys were riding bicycles in the street and, and you know, with your friends. But now imagine if you were that little kid and your friends and you guys are riding bicycle, but at this time it's a different type of ride. You're riding the bicycle for survival. Mm-hmm. And you have to help your mother. Let's say, you know, in my case, my widow mom, my father died in a car explosion. My stepfather was murdered. So that kid riding that little bicycle was myself. Mm-hmm. And I had to sell bread on the streets, you know, and my friends have to sell also empanadas and sodas and, and beer. And we put ourselves in the environment where people would get together around bus stations where massive amounts of people in Brazil is over 250 million people, a lot of poverty. So they all get together. We don't know that many people have access to cars. Mm-hmm. So they all use the buses to get to work and they're hungry. So we will put ourselves in those environments on bicycles 
and we will wrap on the back on the bike, you know, and put our products and goods and services. So that was all right because, you know, it was a survival thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm afraid of them telling me no. Oh, I'm afraid of, the, no, the rejection, no, danger, all this stuff. We just like, you started embracing it. We started looking at the world with the different sets of lenses. I look at no, a fear, anxiety, rejection with a different set of eyes. I preframe myself and I tell myself, adversities will happen. I cannot prevent my loved ones from dying. I cannot prevent an employee or a business partner to do something stupid. I yep. cannot prevent if the electricity will shut down right now or if I'm doing a mastermind on a mansion and, and, and there is a tsunami comes or the whole thing gets flooded, which has happened in my past. I cannot control. See, the moment that we give up that control and we give up fear and we give up all this thing about what others are going to think about ourselves, that's when the magic happens. When you let that shit go, that's mm -hmm. when you're going to see the true growth. And that's what I had to do. I had to sell that bread. And it was fearful at first. Trust me. You know what I mean? Before that, you know, you, might, you guys might, you don't you cannot see me when I'm in person, but I'm 320 pounds, 6'5". People say I'm larger than life. But I, this person did not exist. I had to build this person. Yeah. The same thing. Who you were yesterday, who you who you were, who you are right now, and who are you gonna be tomorrow is three different people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like just like let it go, all the stuff, all the hurt. You know what I mean? Like I talk about this quite a bit on the stage. You know what I mean? That you people just let shit go and just draw a line and tell yourself that you know what? Happiness is right now. When I'm drawing a line on the sand and I'm going to tell myself I'm happy for what I have. Just like when I was seven years old, I was like, you know, I'm happy. I got this bread and if I sell it, I'm going to help my mom. We're going to pay the bills. We're going to bring food. And one day I'm going to end. I'm going to end the evil things that were happening to us. Yeah. When my mom was being abused behind closed doors and I would just hear the Lord, bah, 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 and my stepfather would abuse her. And she, he would storm out of the house. And she would walk out of the room. She just would wipe the tears in her eyes. And I was just a little kid, six, seven years old, and mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything. And I just felt like worthless. You guys ever felt like worthless, like shit, like, you know, you cannot do nothing about it, and you just wanted to give up and end your life? And, and there was no hope? Yeah, that was me. But in a little tiny body. You know what? And, and I talk about this quite a bit on the stage, and, and, but I won't go as deep in here, but I didn't want to end my life that little. Yeah. But he said, God has spoken with me and I made a shift. And he said, son, here's what I'm doing. God whisper. I talk about this. I call the whispers from God. Not to go too spiritual on you guys. But he said that your future doesn't have to equal your past. Unless Correct. you carry on the shit with you. I'm oh, percent, brother. brother Carlos, your future doesn't have to equal your past unless you carry on with you. So whatever that is, ladies and gentlemen, let it go. Whatever that is, surround yourself with amazing people. Listen to great podcasts like my boy Lawrence here. You know, put yourself in the environments. And whenever we are putting something together, an event, a mastermind, something, if you will follow, if you like it, what do we teach? If you love this, put yourself in the environment. You cannot afford to be there. Hey, ask us. Do you need help? Mm -hmm. Do you need somebody to crew for you? Do you need somebody to help you set up the chairs? Do you need somebody to sit on registration? You know, that's always a way if there is a will. You know what I mean, bro? I totally agree there, brother. Um, let me just go back a, a split second. You know, I, you would have heard it uh, so many times, but I can't imagine what you've gone through as a child until we are today. And I just take my hat off on you of getting through that. You talk about the dark moments you had, and there's something big that's in your brand, and you call it the red card. And you said you gave yourself the red card for life. So if anyone had seen Carlos Cicada's brand, he's got these red cards and these yellow cards. You'll come on stage, and you'll pull them out and put it in the face and pretty much go, hey, dude, Shut the fuck up. I've just recorded you. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? And uh, going back to the story, he gave his life, as he called it, a red card at that stage because he didn't know how to ov overcome it, that darkness, the challenges he had as a six- and seven-year-old in Brazil trying to survive, trying to help out with his mother. But one thing that he did, and as he said at the moment, is he finally had the realization when he had the whispers of God, he finally had the realization that if you leave the shit behind tomorrow, uh, yesterday, tomorrow will be better. And if you follow the path that he took from that moment of, funny enough was, 
still selling what he was selling, but he started to learn every single day. And what he did, some people might think it was crazy, is he started then first mixing, unfortunately at that stage, with some of the drug dealers and some of the dodgy people in Brazil and learning what was good or bad in their business model. Then he started taking it further and started learning about businesses actually and people that he meant that ran legitimate businesses and said what is good or bad in those situations and by the time he had done i think it was 18 years old coming to america he had over 10 years of business insight way better than an mba qualification of any day because he asked people the right question and he was social about it and he built relationships about it to be able to say not just who are you and what do you do or it is how can i help you and how can I change things to make it better? And that's the sort of insights they brought into. And it was one of the big fundamentals that Carlos Cicado launched his book, which is called Work Like an Immigrant. Okay? Now, you must have one there. You must have one there, right? There we go. Work like an immigrant. Like an immigrant, baby. You know, on the gram, right? And that is all the, and that's all the insights and the fundamentals of what he's talking about at the moment. If you're listening is do things opposite to the norm. Build relationships the real way. Build help the real way. And fundamentally, if you want to change tomorrow, you got to leave yesterday behind. And that's what he just said at the moment. I love it, brother. I love it how you, baby, you brought me back. You know, <laughs> you know, I used to finish, sell my bread. And um, I'll tell you guys about a formula that I use as a little mm -hmm. kid. That to these days, this formula still works. And if you guys apply it, it will change everything that you do about business next year. And... I remember when I used to finish selling my bread and then I would just talk to the local business owners, right? Just ask, yeah. you know, hey, why you do what you do? What would you change? Well, how can you make it better? What would you avoid doing? And I would I just get in their mind, you know, get in their psyche. How can I call it? I'm fascinated, Lawrence, by how taking, I don't, like I help over 3,000 people in my lifetime, you know, influencers and gurus and, you know, and I sold over $3 billion and I like, trained thousands of people in sales and marketing. But you know what? I, I'm fascinated by bro, is how can you get into their psyche mm -hmm. and understand the reasons behind why we do what we do? And then how can we collapse time? How can we shrink it, right? And collapse time where we're going to short the sales cycle to get to the end result faster. Because in my mind, if I can help the gurus and people with the right heart in the right place and the influencers and governmental people and celebrities make more money, become more influential, if I can get into their head, and challenge them and hold them accountable, then collectively, all of us can influence and impact over a billion lives much faster. Correct. See, my goal, bro, is to, a uh, question that I always ask myself, how can I make poverty history? Mm -hmm. that I'm constantly asking myself. And when I ask that question, then I ask myself, okay, who, who is the next influencer, millionaire, billionaire that I gotta have lunch with, that I gotta have dinner with, that I gotta get on the show, that I gotta have breakfast with, who is that person? And I start asking questions. I ask my followers, I ask my friends, I ask people that I meet, who do you know that is influential? You know, you meet someone, hey, who's the most influential person that you know that it could have been also on my podcast? You know, yeah. you're always interviewing amazing people. But if you don't ask, then, you know, people are afraid to ask. We live in a society that we are afraid to talk. Just like when you get your product, right, whatever you guys are selling, and it comes down to sell, you're so excited about the product, about the, the steps and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But when it comes to ask for the money, you, you'd be so surprised, Lawrence. Gurus, like people that people look up to, they tell me like backstage, bro, I am terrorized to ask for the money. I'm yeah. terrorized of my call to action. You know, and what people don't understand, if you have what it takes, if you have something that can change someone's life, you're doing somebody a discernment by not offering Offer. your by not talking about it. Just right. like for, right? when I used to sell bread, so in picture, seven years old, now I got to put myself in where the environment, in the avatar place. So now I'm over there, okay, where are people going to be? So they're going to be cashing their checks on the 1st and the 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then I would scout at all the locations, and they're going to have to get on the bus early, early in the morning before, you know, they had to work. And they, uh, where are they going to go the most? Downtown. That's where the biggest line most people will conglomerate mm -hmm. to wait for the buses, right? So I figured, great. I got some cool spots to go. So then I will go park my bicycle, and now I'm looking around, and other kids also selling breads, different type of breads, empanadas, and everybody's selling something, right? Because in Brazil, it's very typical for seeing kids working, especially yeah. back in the 80s and the 90s. So that was very typical. 
to this day you still see it but not as much but there's still quite a bit and then so now the fearful part comes you got you got there you you launch your product you, you it's all beautiful website and business cards and it's all beautiful and dandy now it's time ladies and gentlemen <laughs> are you ready to rumble and then and then oh shit and then i'm like oh man this is this is this is fearful. Then I'll be like, what do we do? His shoulders down, we cross our arms. Oh, I'm afraid. What am I going to do? How am I going to approach the first person? And I was like, you know what? I used to know how to do a whistle because I played soccer. Yeah. So I was like, I got an idea. And you know, I got an idea. And I have this little flag thing on my bike. So I get the flag and then I go and I start rolling the flag in the air and the, bar, the bike is parked over here next to me. And I'm like a chubby little boy. Even though I was seven years old, I looked like I was 10, 11. Mm -hmm. So then I go, bread, bread. <laughs> I got the best bread in town, ladies and gentlemen. You eat this bread and you're going to feel amazing. You eat this bread and it doesn't matter what your boss or what your spouse will say, you still will feel awesomeness. You eat this bread and it doesn't matter. They say no, you say next. You dance with the rejection. You stab the devil in the back and you keep going forward because you know how to act. And then <laughs> I would just, bro, and out of nowhere, people would like, start gathering around me oh look at this little kid he's funny and blah 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 what you got there and then you know then i got this bread and then i, then I was like selling it yep. i will sell my bucket of bread so fast because i was fascinated how can i sell it fast how can i compress time how can i be different than everybody else and, and think about yourself what is one thing right now that you can do today that others don't do can't do and will not think of doing. Correct. Oh, say it again, brother. Write this thing down. What is one thing that you're going to differentiate yourself from the entire world where I want you to make your competition irrelevant? What is one thing that you can do that others don't do, can't do, and will not think of doing? What is one thing that your competitors are failing to answer that you can answer better and flip the coin? 100 percent brother i mean the main that, like you said the, the main thing is people in the sales or the coaching industry that have the fear of asking the question but if you come forward with the right quality and content and message the question is actually the easiest part at the end so if i come through and i provide insight and knowledge to show that in a room of a thousand people i can help a hundred when i ask the question those hundred people will say yes so the one thing that has to be a realization, whenever I ask the question at the end, whether it is to sign on to, or to buy the package or to buy the product or to sign as a consultant, you're not always going to get a yes. If you're going into a, a place to sell or you're going into that mindset and you think that, you're always going to fail and you're always going to be afraid to ask it. You've got to be realistic in what you're doing. But you can be 100% accurate in offering a service that's always going to impact people's lives. And you just have to be realistic that not everyone is going to take that opportunity because they are scared themselves to change. They might not be in the same business industry with you or they might not financially be in the right place. But if you offer them the right stuff up front, you always get percentage that will say yes, no matter what the sell is at the end. And that's where a lot of people miss it today. They come in and go, little, 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 buy this massive pack and I'll give you all the tips and tricks at the end. And I'm sitting there going, you're not showing me anything up front why I should build a relationship with you, why I should spend X amount of dollars with you to give me that service. If you do it up front and you bring the quality and you change the norm, as you explained right now, you did something different to what the market is doing. I'm going to go, I'm going to pay attention to him. Because in the market we get in today's world, the Instagram market, the social media market, the Facebook market, it's all very similar one generation grow, right? It's influencer based, it's pushed based, um, it's specific kind of advertising. There's no one coming up outside of Carlos Cicada and his lovely style and his hat and, you know, just on a side piece. He's gone on to a speaking gig. I don't know how many thousand people were there. And he drove in on a little kid's push bicycle, okay, with a hat and a bicycle. Bicycle only being about this big, just right? To some, just to give some context, that was the Oscars night. <laughs> week. Oscars week. One of the Oscars event, the several Oscars events happening in LA. Yep. Was one of those Oscars events, like Wesley's nights were yep. there, 
bunch of big celebrities. So <laughs> go ahead, continue. <laughs> so yeah, so this is how you break the norm. This is how you challenge the current uh, mythology of getting across your message because it's so saturated in the space. And this is what Carlos does so great, and it's amazing to see that. And anything that you go on with the content and see it is is how you want to give people a new insight into it. Because if I keep saying to you, if I come to you and said, I'll give you a coach or I'll be your mentor or I'll, lost, uh, or I'll launch a mastermind, those are all vanilla flavored, exactly the same as the last person. And also you don't get a lot of insight up front. Where Carlos comes out and goes, I'm gonna give you all of this. Here's everything you can give from me. I'm an open book to the point. And in a small portion, what I do is I lock behind the closed doors in the vault with himself and a gentleman, I believe it is Glenn, Glenn Dietzel does a lot of the training as well. And one of the great things, um, if I have a look, um, you can find a lot of this content on YouTube, uh, the Carlos Cicada's YouTube channel. There's a great insight um, that you, yourself and Glenn are talking about. And it was that Glenn, yeah, I think you call him the professor, he, have a, he had a message called that the big, uh, it's not the big that eats the small, but it's the foss that consumes the slow, correct? Say it again, brother. Write it down. Write it down, right? It's not the big that eats the small, but it's the fast that eats the slow. And I must consumes this slow, baby. Yeah. For real. <laughs> and that is one of the best, I must say, out of everything I've consumed the last 12 months, that two comments right there is one of the best things I've heard about the social media world, the business world, and the influencer world. If you put your mindset in that, it's not the big, it's not the big companies that are winning. It's not the big corporations, the big accounts that are pushing it. It's the fast that's eating the slow. It's the people that are revolutionizing quickly, doing things differently, and pushing the mold that are overtaking the stagnant way of running a business. I mean, if you look at, if you look at anyone, if you go back to um, BlackBerry, look at, look at the technology of BlackBerry, thinking they're one of the largest players in the game and wouldn't have to revolutionize when the smartphones came out. And, you know, where's BlackBerry today? I think half a percent in the world. You look at the likes of, uh, what's the Kodak cameras? What's the cameras that came out of the... Words out of my mind. Yeah, right? Kodak oh, cameras. You go there and the movie's not there in the shelf and you're like, damn it. I wish yeah. it was I wish it would be a service online or a way to get, you know, that was unlimited movies to rent. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, Netflix, the same thing. It's the same. Uber, it's the same thing. They've changed. They went totally against the stream and they are successful where they are today. You know, it's funny, you know, you just gave me so much memories over here. And, you know, like I'm actually, my anniversary is coming up in a couple of days and uh, one of my clients is also going to be in Tahoe. So I'm mm -hmm. actually going to be there with my wife and then I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be interviewing him because, he used to be a very successful salon owner. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, he was a salon owner in New York, already doing seven figures, you know, with his salons. But he knew that he was here in this world for something bigger. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be an influencer. He wanted to help more people. And then I told him, look, is that what you really want? Prove it to me. Because I'm the type of person that I have a very strong vetting process. People come to me just because they have money, they can buy me. My soul is not for sale. Yep. You got to show me that you want as bad as you do because I don't want to waste your time on my time. I want to make sure that that's what you really want to do. You know what I mean? If you love helping people, mentoring people, you know, doing events and masterminds and retreats, whatever your thing is, if you, if you love doing that to the intent of helping people, where it's not like everybody else, where only the people that own those things are mm -hmm. the ones making money, if you have the intent of flipping the game and helping and impacting and helping others, and you're already doing it right now, you're already helping people with the, maybe you don't have as much, but you're already putting yourself out there on the streets. You're already yep. contributing. Now you got some brownie points with me. Mm -hmm. Especially if I, start, if I look you up and I do an audit on you and I see you on social, trust me, I love those type of people because I now I know that you want as bad as I do. And this guy, bro, he went literally, you know, he's okay, cause I'm gonna become my influence, I'm gonna start speaking. So literally, we took him for like day one, to like two weeks later, close a deal for 17K. Yep. You know what I mean? Brand, I'm not a hair salon owner, right? So it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, right? If, if that's you, because when, well, excuse me, if it's, your, if it's your passion, if you love it, and if you have that intent and that love and that passion and that drive to help people and you apply the stuff that I talk about, add massive value first, give them content to help them make money. Mm -hmm. like, trust me, you don't have to sell anything. They're going to come back. Yep. You're going to master how to do something that I'm always teaching, which is flipping the sales process. Yep. Instead of you selling, people will come to you and they're going to be like, dude, what, how, what, you know, how can I join your tribe? How can, what, I, what do I have to do to attend your events? Trust me, you're going to flip the process. But it's all about 
going right back to the point that Lawrence and I've been talking about over here, just give your best. Stay away from, you know, going, get, you don't need a book or a course or to show up on TV to get credibility. You just got to help one person every day. Mm -hmm. Just one act of kindness a day. Help one person a day. Help one, you know what I mean, and, and give. Help and give. You know what I mean? And then watch it. You start helping people for free, helping them, giving them value. They're going to get results. They're going to be talking about you. You're going to be the, known as the go-to person in your town. You don't even have to travel. Something that I talk about a lot, yo, I take up advantage of your home court advantage, just like sports team do, right? Mm -hmm. You become the sports team in your town, and then you keep adding value. And speaking of adding value, Here's a, I'm, I'm going to give you guys a multi-million dollar strategy right now that I want you guys to apply in your business. And write this thing down. I want you guys to go back. I want you guys to make some money right now this next two weeks. Because the holidays, a lot of people out there are going to be doing the New Year's resolution. I want you yep. guys to now tell them, you know what? Screw New Year's resolution. Let's, let's get down to business here. And here's the thing. And this goes right back to when I used to, when I used to be a little kid selling the bread, right? My, by the way, my formula that I forgot to talk about was MCE. The M is to master sales and marketing. If you wanna change and increase your income next year, next decade, and if you want it to be different yep. than what it was this past year and decade, you must master sales and marketing. Especially you as a CEO, you gotta master that first. You can only outsource so much. Mm -hmm. You need to understand your processes, your methods, so that you can train other people, so that you can make sure that they are not cheating you. So number one thing, master sales and marketing. They are your twin tickets to freedom. Two, entertainment. Think about it. If I do an audit right now in your brand, in your website, in your email sequence, your webinars, your, your social media, and if I ask myself that question, is this entertaining or boring? Yep. Because here's the deal, guys. You have one to three seconds to get their attention, to capture their attention. That's how fast things are going. And it's going to keep going faster. One to three seconds to capture their attention. People are looking at you right now. They are looking at Lawrence. They are looking at me. They are judging us. They are judging how we look, the color of our skin, the stuff that comes out of our mouth. And you got to be like solid. The words that come out of your mouth, your message to market match has to be on point. It has to be like, you know what I mean? And that's and So ask yourself that question right now. Go do an audit. In your website, your blogs, your methods. Is it entertaining or is it boring? Mm -hmm. If it's boring, be, be honest, be real, trust me. Mine was boring too back in the day. I had to change, you know what I mean? Constantly, right, evolving. We're gonna grow, we're gonna improve, we're gonna face the diversities. You gotta constantly be asking yourself that question and never stop asking yourself that question. Never think that just because I spoke at the Oscars and I shared stages with the Tony Robbins of the world and the Liz Browns and I have all these billionaire clients and celebrity clients. No, still grounded to the floor still grounded to what I come from. I still go back to the stuff that I used to do back in the day. The training never stopped, guys. And mm -hmm. finally, the key, constantly educate to dominate. People, you know what I mean? I want you guys to become educational, you know, in your yeah. brand. Be the go-to person for your niche. I want you guys to become a category of one in your niche. And you, the way how you do it, you constantly educate to dominate. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are building a movement here, not building a business. And he's speaking about education to dominate here's a multi-million dollar question for you guys and for you guys to do this is some homework over here this is how i got my teacher head on now you guys are gonna go back to your last 10 clients you are a speaker the last 10 people that hire you the last 10 promoters the last 10 hr folks that you talk to this is i'm sweating over here like crazy because it's all good you know what i mean it's intense <laughs> you know that's the energy that you bring it right i, I prepare yep. for this you know and you're gonna go ask that question. If you are a coach, a consultant, if you are an online marketer, a realtor, a broker, a lawyer, a doctor, go back to your last 10 clients and you're gonna ask themselves this multi-million dollar question. It's after that I go, I go through this with my one-on-one -on -one six-figure clients and you're gonna do the same thing. This is gonna help you guys. Just trust me and do mm -hmm. this deep this gift. And you're gonna ask your clients. I'm doing a, a, some data mining for my company and I wanna ask you this question and I want you to be real and raw with me here. Where, in the heart of hearts, did you decide emotionally and financially to move forward with me? One more time, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask them, where, in the heart of hearts, I want you guys to pinpoint it to the millisecond, where, in the heart of hearts, did you emotionally and financially 
decided to move forward with my services? That's the question. Because if you can pinpoint it, what did you say? What did you hold it on your hand? Mm -hmm. What did you do? What story did you tell? What tagline did you use in your subject of your email, of your newsletter, of your email sequence? Where in the email sequence, which sentence, which phrase, which period? I'm talking about going deep. In your webinar, which second during the webinar, where did you head me? Because if you can pinpoint those things over and over and over, so I've been doing this, trust me, thousands and thousands and thousands of times, 120 different niches, yeah. done over $3 billion in sales. So I know what I'm talking about. So you guys should listen because this is going to help you. Trust me. You know what I mean? That's what people are missing, my accountability. I want to be your accountability coach right now for the next two weeks. I want you guys to do it. And I want you guys to report it back to me on social media that you've done it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll give you a shout. Go, if you do this and you go, uh, go on my Instagram at Carlos Inspire. And if you do this exercise, just write, write to me. And tell me how the experience worked. And tell me that you were here. You know, you saw me over here with my brother Lawrence at the Queen of Wall Street. Because this is, you guys are going to see, this is going to open your eyes so big. Because you're going to be like, oh, okay. And you're going to start seeing different things from different clients. And guess yep. what you're going to do now? Now that you have this data, now you're going to start incorporating this data into your messages, into your keynotes, your TEDxes, your 30-second elevator pitch, your signature and your email, your messages, your conversations, whenever you're on the phone, you're working and closing your deals. That's it, guys. The, you know what I mean? That's the beginning way, that the foundation. You start right there. The follow, listen to this over and over again. Follow my MCE formula. Do the audit on your brand and go and ask those questions. If you are brand new and you want to become a coach and a consultant, go help a few people for free. And tell them, even if you're helping somebody for free, if you are beginning, where you, they still have to say yes. They still have to follow your strategies. Yep. They still have to get the work done. So if you see that they are listening to you and you have influence over them, same thing. Ask them, hey, where did you decide it to move forward with me emotionally? In this case, let's say if it wasn't financially. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's just guy going deep and, and working on it and keep growing and keep doing this. See, the data mining never stops. You have no idea how much money I have made in my life by doing this for corporations because they don't do it. Corporations, they don't do data mining. They might do some stupid service, surveys. <laughs> this is my Brazilian accent. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel me? And, and yeah. that's the stuff. I learned. It's just keeping it real over here, guys. This is exactly what I do with my clients. We do the data mining. I help them craft their keynote, their message, and then you got to be disruptive. Whatever you do, you cannot hold back. I lot of brought it back some memories over here about me rolling on my pink bicycle. Now, big, <laughs> me, big ninja, <laughs> <laughs> 6'5", 330 pounds, on a pink little girl's bicycle, and everybody coming from the back on the stage at the Oscars night, all the speakers and the celebrities, and guess where I come from? The other side, the front, where the people come from. Because mm -hmm. I'm people. I'm with you guys. You can never forget where you come from. So now I am rolling up. And they are calling me, what is Carlos Cicada? And here we go. I'm coming from the other side. Nobody spent rolling up on that bicycle. That's happens on YouTube. And then that you is. go, and then bike, yanky, yanky, yanky. And then you have, I think I chose like a Pitbull song. <laughs> and then, big shot from my brother Pitbull. And then uh, <laughs> I roll up on the bicycle. I mean, I had bread all over the bicycle. I had my sombrero. And then I go and I carry the bicycle to the stage. And I walk away from the bicycle, and then I look at the bicycle, and I say, you can never, ever, ever forget where you come from. Mm -hmm. And the whole place went bananas, you know? And I just, you know what I mean? Like, people always come to me, like Les Brown and, and, and Wesley Zipes and those guys, and they're like, bro, how the heck you come up with those ideas, and you're so creative, you know, with your content and how you do things, and every time on the stage, you do something crazy. You know what I mean? I take people to dance salsa sometimes on the stage. I like to do disruptive stuff. I like to challenge myself. Because yep. what, 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 do you, what do you have to lose? You know what I mean? I want you guys to challenge yourself. How can you tell your story in a way that's compelling, that is inspirational, that is educational, that creates a lasting change, you know, you know, meaning in that person's life? Just like you guys listening to me here, and I guarantee you, the ones who will follow my strategy over here the next two weeks, your life, you know, you're going to start seeing things and it will change. If you do this over time, if you're, in it, if you're in it, you're in it for the long term, you will see results. And you want to take it to another level, go on a 99-day challenge where you give up three things that you love. 
and you give that up for three, for like 99 days. Mm-hmm. Or to the person that you become. I couldn't do a course or a challenge on that and charge people, but I'm not because you know, I want to see people change. Because mm-hmm. I know that the people that will do it, I want, if you do it, if you go on, like for example, right now I'm a 99 day challenge, no alcohol, no sugar, no ice cream. I, man, I, so, I don't drink alcohol that much. I drink it like on a weekend. I like to yeah. watch, so, you know, I go to sports games, like watch basketball and I go watch soccer and football and stuff. Then I drink whenever I'm in a sports arena, but if I'm on a Sunday at home. But I think, okay, I'm going to go 99 days with no alcohol, no sugar, and no ice cream because I love those three things. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? But be, and then I'm going to also challenge myself to go to the gym twice a day, not just once. Yeah. And instead of me doing ice bed only once every other day, or sometimes I do it twice a week. I'm going to do it every day. I'm not spent, which is torture, <laughs> you know. And, but you see, here's the thing, right? We need to build our mental toughness. you got to build it, you know, because there's going to be times, guys, that you're going to feel like quitting. There's going to be times that you're going to be rejected. There's going to be times that something crazy will happen. Your spouse will leave you or something. Your kid will do something because you can only control so much. Your business partner will do something stupid. Somebody will die. It's always going to be something. And you gotta constantly strengthening your mental toughness skills. You gotta have people holding you accountable. You know what I mean? Like I always say, man. Like you know, like yeah, I seen death so many times. I seen so much horrible things happen to people. But you know, I always tell myself, you know what? God will never put me through something if He didn't think I could handle. Oh, oh say, yes. say it again, brother Carlos. <laughs> say, it, say it. God will never put us through something if He doesn't think we can handle. Because the days that breaks us, ladies and gentlemen, are the days that makes us. That's amazing. That's that's a great comment. And I know Carlos, Carlos on quite a tight time from at the moment. We've got a couple of minutes left of the show. But just to take it back a little bit, anyone in the business world today knows that in, in social media, in business, there's algorithms. Instagram is algorithms. Facebook is algorithms. YouTube is algorithms. And everyone has been focused on that. What Carlos just said over the last 10 minutes is the algorithm of life and business and how to fundamentally succeed. I love the insight is go find the split second that someone decided to pick your brand over someone else's or decided to pay for your service over else's. Package that up, understand the space that it is, and push that direct component of success in front of people. That is the life algorithm. That is the business algorithm, not the social media algorithm. This is actually where tangible success is being achieved, not by likes and comments, but how you sell in and your brand has been heard. So make sure you go back to how Carlos explained that. Listen to it multiple times. Go back to the last 10 people, as you said, and ask that exact question to realize what you did right, what you said right, whether it was a laugh, whether it was a moment of passion, whether it was a moment of weakness. You'll be surprised how much honesty and weakness will give you more character in front of people that want to buy your service because you look, look you become across more real. And that's, a, that's something you can see in Carlos. There's honesty, there's realness. There's nothing, there's no bullshit or sugarcoat number. It is the way it is. And I love that whole insight into it. And like you said as well, life is going to challenge you. You've got to accept it, but you've got to know that's part of your journey that you're going to get hit today so you can walk tomorrow and you can run the day after that. And it's just amazing, um, Carlos, in the last 45 minutes, everything you throw into our listeners. There's so much content, so much insights. I'm going to have to listen to this three times over to consume everything myself in any way. I want to see. I want to get the replay. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. So don't worry. I know you're running to. Um, I've I've been pushed in between two different uh, meetings you have at the moment. I know we've got a couple of minutes left. Before I let you go, please let our listeners and to anyone that's listening, going and shouting at me right now, going, "I want more of Carlos. I want more of Carlos." You can find Carlos online. Don't worry. You can get more of him as much as you want. Carlos, please let me know where uh, my fans and anyone that's listening today can find you. What's your handles? Social media. Where can we get you? Man, I'm always very active on Instagram, guys. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Carlos Inspire, C-A-R-L-O-S Inspire. You know what I mean? Below my profile, if you guys go on my bio, I'm always dropping several links there with amazing gifts. You guys can go through those gifts. Those gifts are like, whenever I give away something, this is things that people charge, like 25K, 100K to join masterminds for a year. I just give, give, give. Because like I always say, if you are great, if you, are, if you are awesome, you know what I mean? Show mm-hmm. me, don't tell me. And, it, and that's what I want you guys to do. That's what I challenge the coaches and the speakers and the authors out there to do. And I'll leave you guys with this. 
you know, your why, you know, you hear about why quite a bit out there. Make sure that whatever you do, whatever, you know, you're going to do from now on is in true alignment with your why and what you love to do. Because if it's not, you're going to quit. But when it's that deep, guys, you know what I mean? Like you probably hear about the three layers of why, seven layers of why. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to go 21 layers. Whatever is you want. Whatever is that thing that you want, you know, that. That, that, you know, you want to change the mold and you want to build schools to help children and you go feed kids in the villages in third world countries and big house and castle and airplane, helicopter, whatever's your thing. You know what I mean? I'm not going to judge you. You know, you, you work hard, you make money, you, you enjoy life and you help people. But ask yourself, why do you want that thing? Mm -hmm. And then you keep going. You keep going 21 layers deep. I want you to get so real with yourself. That by the time when you're 17, you're probably going to be on tears already because you're going to get to know, you're going to go deep. We, 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 tend to, we do that for other people and we study other people's lives, but we don't do that with our own lives. I want you to give yourself that gift this holiday. That's my gift to you because this is, you're going to feel so good with those exercises. You know what I mean? Like going on a 99-day challenge, build your mental toughness, go understanding your why. Because see, my why is to make poverty history. My why is to fulfill that promise that I made a long time ago with my friends that sold on the streets with me. A lot of them died. They are no longer here to tell their story, but we made a promise. And we say that whoever leaves the hood, we are going to make an impact. Mm -hmm. We are going we to influence the influencers. We're going to help the presidents, the celebrities, the musicians, the athletes, whoever was in power, whoever had influence over people, we are going to somehow get to them. And we are going to hold them accountable. We are going to talk to them that is more to life than fame and money. We are going to make every day count. And now I'm not the type of person that I don't break promises. And I want you to go do those exercises. And I want you guys to stop counting the likes, stop counting the shares, stop counting the followers, stop counting how much zero is in your bank account. And instead, make every minute count. Make every breath count. Start doing more often the things that take other people's breath away. Sure. Carlos Cicada in the house. Life is about contribution, not acquisition. And the days that break you, ladies and gentlemen, are the days that make you. Let's go make the world a better place. Come on, yeah. Alan. Um, amazing Carlos uh, what a way to end off the show just totally inspiring to anyone that's listening here. I, I'm pretty pumped it's 8 a.m. in the morning by me and I'm like feeling like I want to go run a mile or uh, 10 miles or 100 miles or whatever at the moment amazing content amazing message I just love what you had to say Carlos uh, as you said Carlos Inspire on Instagram please go and follow this man follow his journey you can hear that he's what he's trying to do and he's help out, helping out the rest of the world and let's do it all together and to everyone else that has joined us today thank you so much coming to the Wolf of Queen Street on the audio podcast or the YouTube series. And as I've asked always before, if you enjoy the show, if you like this episode, I'm not asking you for to send me money. I'm not asking you to do anything. All I'm asking you is just tell one friend to come on over, have a listen, and let them see the journey that we are trying to do and how many people we are trying to help. But at the end of the day, have a passionate, have a loving, and have a great day today from myself and Carlos. See you next time. Yes, sir.